uh, the Florida, uh, Florida and the country know that we're here marching 40 miles today, tomorrow, and Saturday um, to bring awareness to institutionalized racism and to say that we want all Confederate monuments, white supremacist symbols, school names, bridges, uh, streets, and uh, monuments down. Um, all of them down, take them all down, take them down everywhere. Uh, we're taking them down Jacks, Northside Coalition, Occupy Jacksonville, Jacksonville Progressive Coalition. And uh, I want everybody to know in all of Jacksonville, we have nurses with us, we have security, we have uh, peacekeepers. And um, yeah, I'd like to shoot it over to Reverend Baber. So I'm uh, Pastor Philip Baber, uh, the pastor of the Unitarian Universalist Church of Jacksonville. Uh, my name is spelled P-H-I-L-L-I-P-B-A-B-E-R. Uh, I am here today because my faith compels me to rise against racism and tear down white supremacy. Woo! Yeah. That moral clarity leads me here this morning to demand the removal of these Confederate monuments, these state-sanctioned symbols that glorify the historic dehumanization of an entire race of people. It is an indisputable fact that the Confederacy existed to protect the institution of human slavery. Confederate soldiers committed treason against the United States of America. They killed and maimed hundreds of thousands of American soldiers to defend the abominable idea that people of African heritage weren't really people, that they were property, possessions, things to be owned, symbols that can reasonably be interpreted to celebrate the dehumanization of an entire race of people cannot bear the imprimatur of the state. Cities that allow the exaltation of Confederate monuments in places of public prominence are celebrating the sin of slavery That's right. and we become complicit to the sins we celebrate. Yeah. Yeah. It is unconscionable that black residents of Jacksonville must be subjected to these painful and shameful celebrations of racism. No African American individual, no descendant of an American slave should be forced to suffer the indignity of walking under the gaze of an elevated Confederate soldier on the way to the seat of their own city's government. Mm. Wow. So long as Jacksonville continues to pay honor and homage to these statues, we shall all remain under the watchful and oppressive shadow of the Confederacy. So I'm here to plead today with the leaders of our city. If you believe in the vision of one city, one Jacks, then remove these monuments that are dividing our community before they tear our city apart. Denounce racism unequivocally. Make Jacksonville a city where all people feel welcome, people of every race and every ethnicity. Make our city a place where there is truly liberty and justice for all. Yes. 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 Take them down. Take them yes. down. Thank you so much, Philip Baber. I'm gonna copy that speech you got there, bro. Yeah. I need a copy of that. That's a good one. That was uh, Philip Baber of the Unitarian Universalist Church of Jacksonville. Yeah, that's And uh, take them down, Jax. Take them down. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Now we have Ben Frazier of the Northside Coalition and take them down, Jax. One city. One Jacksonville. One Jacksonville. Jackson. To be or not to be. That is the question. This is a life and death matter for this city. City officials must stand up and be counted regarding this crucial conversation. This is not just a battle about bronze, metal, and marble. This is also a battle about where we stand in terms of our heads, our hearts, and our souls. We cannot simply turn our heads 
and look the other way. This is also a battle against racism and white supremacy because that is what these Confederate monuments represent. There is, in fact, a direct connection, an inextricable link, if you will, between the Confederate monuments and white supremacy, black oppression, and the lynchings of black men, women, and children. We want to march for change, to raise awareness about the insidious and horrifying nature and impact of racism on the lives of black people everywhere. There is a Confederate connection. We want to march for change to connect the dots of past historical events to what's actually going on today. Issues like explicit and implicit racial bias in the criminal justice system from arrest to mass incarceration and of course we want to discuss the devastating and far-reaching effect of racial disparities and economic injustice it's all connected and if you look real close you'll see that there is in fact a confederate connection. This is not simply about the eradication of anybody's history. This is not an attack on southern heritage. This is in fact an attack on confederate heritage. Thank you, That's where we are. Thank you so much Ben Fraser of the Northside Coalition. Uh, if everybody could chat with me for a sec. Hashtag take them down. No racist monuments in our town. Hashtag take them down. No racist monuments in our town. Hashtag take them down. No racist monuments in our town. Hashtag take them down. No racist monuments in our town. Hashtag take them down. No racist monuments in our town. Thank you so much. And we've got Lauren Cephas from the Black Commission. Hello, my name is Lauren Cephas and I am with the Black Commission, a political advocacy organization which addresses issues as they pertain to folk within the black community here in Jacksonville. We agree that the Confederate monuments are part of history. We also agree that these monuments represent systemic racism while erected during Jim Crow the mindset and practices of those in authority stem from Civil War era. City officials lack, lack of empathy and understanding of how black constituents perceive these monuments has many messages, one being that our opinions and resolutions do not matter. This march from Jacks to St. Augustine to join with another city battling the same insulting rhetoric is so important. It shows relentless strides, relentless strides that our community members will take to bring awareness to a much larger issue than a statue. We at the Black Commission support the efforts of Take Em Down Jacks and collaborating organizations as they continue to peacefully protest the symbolism of hate and, and oppression. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you so much, Lauren. That was Lauren Cephas with the Black Commission. And I uh, got another chant for us. All right. Yeah. Ready. Woo. Uh, <laughs> uh, heritage of hate is nothing to celebrate. Heritage, heritage of hate is nothing to celebrate. Heritage of hate is nothing to celebrate. The heritage of hate is nothing to celebrate. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, now Bonnie Hendricks of the Women's March, Women's March Florida, Jacksonville, Women's March Jacksonville. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Bonnie Hendricks and I'm here as a leader of Women's March Jacksonville as a voter and as a woman. Standing in solidarity with this endeavor 
this in movement this movement to bring about change since the emancipation proclamation the 13th 14th and 15th amendment the civil rights acts of 1866 1871 1875 multiple supreme court cases all the way through the civil rights act of 1964 and on this country has passed legislation to force change they hoped would ultimately eliminate the oppression, brutality, and, and inequities leveled against black people. History records show that we, white people, have fought back against these changes with massacres of black people and their white supporters, lynchings, the formation of paramilitary groups such as the KKK, the White League, the Red Shirts, and white nationalists. Historically, state leaders attempted to legalize discrimination through black codes, poll taxes, segregation, Jim Crow separate but equal laws, and now gerrymandering. It was during these periods of resistance to change that these statues were erected. These statues were a commitment of the old white Southern Guard to maintain their superiority over blacks, symbolize their station in life, and honor a war where we, Americans, killed approximately 750,000 Americans. We killed each other. I cannot imagine what it must feel like to walk through a park in your own hometown that harbors a statue to honor those that went to such extremes to ensure that white men could buy, sell, brutalize, rape, mutilate, and abuse children and otherwise force their will on your great-grandparents and their ancestors. I also cannot imagine that we, as Southerners, cannot see that there are so many more great things about our heritage to celebrate that we could and we should honor. Why would we continue to focus on the worst period of our history when families were divided, war was waged, and people were brutalized? This is a period we should learn from and strive never to repeat. Uh, the Florida, uh, Florida and the country know that we're here marching 40 miles today, tomorrow, and Saturday um, to bring awareness to institutionalized racism and to say that we want all Confederate monuments, white supremacist symbols, school names, bridges, uh, streets, and uh, monuments down. Um, all of them down, take them all down, take them down everywhere. Uh, we're taking them down Jacks, Northside Coalition, Occupy Jacksonville, Jacksonville Progressive Coalition. And uh, I want everybody to know in all of Jacksonville, we have nurses with us, we have security, we have uh, peacekeepers, and um, yeah, I'd like to shoot it over to Reverend Baber. Introduce yourself. By your name. Sure, absolutely. Um, so uh, I'm uh, Pastor Philip Baber, uh, the pastor of the Unitarian Universalist Church of Jacksonville. Uh, my name is spelled P-H-I-L-L-I-P-B-A-B-E-R. Uh, I am here today because my faith compels me to rise against racism and tear down white supremacy. Woo. That moral clarity leads me here this morning to demand the removal of these Confederate monuments, these state-sanctioned symbols that glorify the historic dehumanization of an entire race of people. It is an indisputable fact that the Confederacy existed to protect the institution of human slavery. Confederate soldiers committed treason against the United States of America. They killed and maimed hundreds of thousands of American soldiers to defend the abominable idea that people of African heritage weren't really people, that they were property, possessions, things to be owned, symbols that can reasonably be interpreted to celebrate the dehumanization of an entire race of people, cannot bear the imprimatur of the state. Cities that allow the exaltation of Confederate monuments in places of public prominence are celebrating the sin of slavery. That's right. 
and we become complicit to the sins we celebrate. It is unconscionable that black residents of Jacksonville must be subjected to these painful and shameful celebrations of racism. No African American individual, no descendant of an American slave should be forced to suffer the indignity of walking under the gaze of an elevated Confederate soldier on the way to the seat of their own city's government. So long as Jacksonville continues to pay honor and homage to these statues, we shall all remain under the watchful and oppressive shadow of the Confederacy. So I'm here to plead today with the leaders of our city. If you believe in the vision of one city, one Jacks, then remove these monuments that are dividing our community before they tear our city apart. Denounce racism unequivocally. Make Jacksonville a city where all people feel welcome, people of every race and every ethnicity. Make our city a place where there is truly liberty and justice for all. Yes. 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 Take him down. Take yes. him down. Thank you so much, Take Philip Aver. Copy of that speech you got there, bro. Yeah. I need a copy of that. That's a good one. That was uh, Philip Aber of the Unitarian Universalist Church of Jacksonville. Yeah, that's right. And, uh, Take them down, Jax. Take them down. 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 Thank you, thank you. And we have Ben Frazier of the Northside Coalition and Take Them Down, Jax. One city. One Jacksonville. One Jacksonville. To be or not to be. That is the question. This is a life and death matter for this city. City officials must stand up and be counted regarding this crucial conversation. This is not just a battle about bronze, metal, and marble. This is also a battle about where we stand in terms of our heads, our hearts, and our souls. We cannot simply turn our heads and look the other way. This is also a battle against racism and white supremacy because that is what these Confederate monuments represent. There is, in fact, a direct connection, an inextricable link, if you will, between the Confederate monuments and white supremacy, black oppression, and the lynchings of black men, women, and children. We want to march for change, to raise awareness, about the insidious and horrifying nature and impact of racism on the lives of black people everywhere. There is a Confederate connection. We want to march for change to connect the dots of past historical events to what's actually going on today. Issues like explicit and implicit racial bias in the criminal justice system from arrest to mass incarceration and of course we want to discuss the devastating and far-reaching effect of racial disparities and economic injustice it's all connected and if you look real close you'll see that there is in fact a confederate connection. This is not simply about the eradication of anybody's history. This is not an attack on southern heritage. This is in fact an attack on confederate heritage. Thank you, That's where we are. Thank you so much Ben Fraser of the Northside Coalition. Uh, if everybody could chant with me for a sec. 
Hashtag take them down. No racist monuments in our town. Hashtag take them down. No racist monuments in our town. Hashtag take them down. No racist monuments in our town. Hashtag take them down. No racist monuments in our town. Hashtag take them down. No racist monuments in our town. Thank you so much. And we've got Lauren Cephas from the Black Commission. Hello, my name is Lauren Cephas and I am with the Black Commission, a political advocacy organization which addresses issues as they pertain to folk within the black community here in Jacksonville. We agree that the Confederate monuments are part of history. We also agree that these monuments represent systemic racism while erected during Jim Crow the mindset and practices of those in authority stem from Civil War era. City officials lack, lack of empathy and understanding of how black constituents perceive these monuments has many messages, one being that our opinions and resolutions do not matter. This march from Jacks to St. Augustine to join with another city battling the same insulting rhetoric is so important. It shows relentless strides, relentless strides that our community members will take to bring awareness to a much larger issue than a statue. We at the Black Commission support the efforts of Take Em Down Jacks and collaborating organizations as they continue to peacefully protest the symbolism of hate and, and oppression. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Lauren. Woo! Woo! Thank you so much, Lauren. That was Lauren Cephas with the Black Commission. And I uh, got another chant for us. All right. Yeah. Ready. Woo! Uh, <laughs> uh, heritage of hate is nothing to celebrate. Heritage of hate is nothing to celebrate. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. And uh, now Bonnie Hendricks of the Women's March, Women's March, Florida, Jacksonville. Women's March, Jacksonville. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Bonnie Hendricks, and I'm here as a leader of Women's March, Jacksonville, as a voter and as a woman, standing in solidarity with this endeavor, this in movement, this movement to bring about change. Since the Emancipation Proclamation the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendment, the Civil Rights Acts of 1866, 1871, 1875, multiple Supreme Court cases, all the way through the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and on. This country has passed legislation to force change they hoped would ultimately eliminate the oppression, brutality, and inequities leveled against black people. History records show that we, white people, have fought back against these changes with massacres of black people and their white supporters, lynchings, the formation of paramilitary groups such as the KKK, the White League, the Red Shirts, and white nationalists. Historically, state leaders attempted to legalize discrimination through black codes, poll taxes, segregation, Jim Crow separate but equal laws, and now gerrymandering. It was during these periods of resistance to change that these statues were erected. These statues were a commitment of the old white Southern Guard to maintain their superiority over blacks, symbolize their station in life, and honor a war where we, Americans, killed approximately 750,000 Americans. We killed each other. I cannot imagine what it must feel like to walk through a park in your own hometown that harbors a statue to honor those that went to such extremes to ensure that white men could buy, sell, brutalize, rape, mutilate and abuse children and otherwise force their will on your great-grandparents and their ancestors. I also cannot imagine that we as Southerners cannot see 
that there are so many more great things about our heritage to celebrate that we could and we should honor. Why would we continue to focus on the worst period of our history when families were divided, war was waged, and people were brutalized? This is a period we should learn from and strive never to repeat. For those who say removal of the statues are an attempt to rewrite history, I say how? How is that possible? How can we rewrite out of our history the deaths of 750,000 people, the brutality that occurred, and the murders? These atrocities will always be part of our past, but they should be put in the past, and we should not unite for our future. These statues could and should be respectfully placed in a museum where we can remember and learn from our past and assure that generations to come remember and never repeat this episode. These statues could and should be replaced with symbols of what we want our city to become, what we want our children to recognize as good and moral and worth striving to be. I am keenly aware today that this change will not come without strong visionary leadership in our city. Leaders must be willing to make the tough decisions needed to ensure Jacksonville is leading in our state and in our country, not lagging and waiting on others to show them how to do what is right. So far, our city officials, Mayor Curry and the City Council, have failed to display a strong vision of unity for Jacksonville. They have failed to act to create a true path or vision to unite Jacksonville. That is why we march. Today, once again, we ask for change. Today, rather than scold and ridicule those who march for change, I hope that you ask, what is the vision for Jacksonville and its diverse communities? Shall we remain in the past, divided by a history of, race, of hate and racial prejudice that is permitted to fester even today, or shall we move forward creating a path to unity and greatness by making the difficult decisions needed to put our past in the past and allow our future to flourish? If you want groups like those waving the Confederate flag to be the influencers of the community that you and your children live in, then remain silent. If you want our city leaders to make the bold, courageous decisions to create a united Jacksonville, to create and sustain a vision of future and greatness for our communities, then don't be silent. Call the mayor's office, call city council, and demand they display the leadership and the strength and courage to put the past in the past, remove these statues, and bring us into the 21st century. Yeah. Thank you, yeah. 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 Thank you so much, Bonnie. Uh, Women's March, Jacksonville. Um, I do want to say as well, we're uh, running with the hashtag March 40. We're marching 42 miles. Uh, Selma was 53 miles in four days, and we're doing 42 miles in three days. So, running with the spirit of Selma. And uh, next we have Hope McMath with the Yellow House and Take Em Down Jacks. Good morning. Not one of our citizens should have to walk into a public park and have to stand in the shadow of their own oppressors. It is a travesty to have this monument standing at the heart of our city, right here on the steps of City Hall, near the halls of justice, and in a place where young people, black and white, were beat with axe handles on a Saturday more than 50 years ago as they demanded equal treatment at lunch counters and beyond. This is a place where the arts are trying to take hold, where all people want to be welcome, where we should be able to break bread with friends and strangers alike. This and the park in Springfield and the public space in St. Augustine that we'll be marching to should be places of unity and uplift. And we can look to cities and towns, large and small, who have had the courage to take them down. Communities who are unwilling to accept the presence of these symbols still used today to perpetuate division and murderous intentions. And we have to remember white America created this. No, none of us that is living today has to literally wash the blood of slavery from our hands. But we are the beneficiaries of systems, of a nation that is built upon the backs of those who were stolen from their homes enslaved, 
raped, and murdered. So whether you are a white American with remarkable means or are still struggling yourself, we are all the descendants of laws, policies, and practices that somehow claimed we were superior and that just because we were white, we should have better schools, better housing, better access to public services, and simply the recognition that I was a whole human being. And because white people built these walls, we must be deeply engaged in tearing them down. It is imperative that we center the, law, the lived experiences of our black brothers and sisters in this effort. But it is our responsibility. White people must take a responsibility to face our fears and our unfounded frailties and act with a sense of urgency. As a native of Jacksonville and someone who's on their own journey of waking in regards to our collective history and my own responsibilities, I can think of nothing more motivating, though it is symbolic, than the removal of these monuments from our public spaces. It sends a powerful message to our citizens of color that their lives really do matter. And to those, it also sends a message to those who would move through this world driven by hate that we do not have room for them here. We become a beacon for truth and reconciliation to the rest of the world if we take these down. We become a community that would be buoyed to continue the even harder work of racial and economic equity, making sure that human rights are universally applied to every life, every community, not just in Ortega, but also on Ken Knight Drive. Some will say that removing these monuments will not solve these issues. And they're right. Removing these will not erase the hate and inequity that we still see in 2018. But it is an important step. Others will say that we're trying to hide our history, that we're trying to rewrite history. But fortunately, we have places where the truth of history can be taught. Even in plantations throughout the South, they are doing the hard and right work of beginning to speak the truth of this history. The homes of past presidents have opened new wings, displaying the truth of their slave-holding ways. The Smithsonian's Museum of African American History of Culture commemorates the sweeping arc of history, from the darkness of bondage to the remarkable achievements of black Americans. And just two weeks ago, I had the amazing pleasure of being at the opening of the National Memorial for Peace and Justice in Montgomery, Alabama, one of the most racist cities on the face of the planet, and they're figuring out how to do this right. This remarkable museum and memorial forces all of us to remember and understand the history of lynching in this country and its direct relationship to the goals of the Confederacy and the travesty today of mass incarceration, which is our modern day shame. And it is a history that should be taught in our schools. The tragedies and triumphs of Americans' relationship with itself. It's not being taught here. We do not need symbols of tyranny populating our public squares to see, teach, and learn this complicated history. If these were effective tools for teaching, we wouldn't still be tearing down the walls of racism today. All people if these really were working, all people would understand that the Confederacy was established to protect and broaden the murderous institution of slavery. If these monuments were teaching us anything, we would understand that all black Americans began to rise to their rightful place during Reconstruction, and white America said, I don't think so. If these were such effective tools of teaching, People would know that many of these monuments were put up during a time when the fight for civil rights, led by Rosa Parks, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, and others, was demanding equality in education, housing, voting, and the promises that were made to all Americans in the Constitution. No, these are not objects of education. They are not objects to celebrate. They are not teachers of our true history. And they are not great art. They are symbols of hate, division, treason, and terror in the guise of soldiers and mothers. They immortalize a story of white supremacy 
and they deny the fact of our founding and the building of our country on the backs of those enslaved. The removal of these monuments is not only about speaking truth to our history, but it's a step forward in recognizing and repairing the oppression that continues today. We will no longer accept this as our norm or our destiny. Remember that we stand on the shoulders and the graves of those who have come before us, and they did not put their bodies on the line for us to sit back apathetically. They demanded of themselves and of each of us courage and action. We cannot rest on the progress that they made, though. We must find our own way and demand more of our elected leaders. And with that, I'm going to leave you with a brief poem, not by a historic figure like Ida B. Wells or Booker T. Washington, but by a young black man named Marcus Amaker, who was the poet laureate in Charleston right after the murders at the church in Charleston and the courageous action of individuals to literally rip down the Confederate flag that flew over their city. And this is what he had to say. America has built too many monuments to war, man-made maladies mounted on Mother Earth. I've seen scars on the skin of our country's landscape, blood-stained band-aids covering exposed bones, a pain that has not healed. We hold hatred high on pedestals in the name of history. Birds are perched on the shoulders of ghosts overlooking God's perfect, clear byline as endless skylines of smoke and division get played out on television. This is real. America, your fetish for warfare has erected stagnant symbols of oppression. Some of your people are just now awakening to the discomfort of the disenfranchised. Your body has been blemished by southern battlegrounds bound to a history of violence. This is real. No statue spirit will wake up to apologize, but you can. No system rooted in racism will ever empathize, but you can. Yeah. Yes. History cannot <laughs> rewrite itself but you can. Yes. Simply tell us the truth. Carve out stones for freedom fighters. Do more to preserve and promote the feminine. And rip off the bandages without ignoring your bondage. And it's going to hurt. And so for our city, this change is going to hurt. But we absolutely demand that there be progress in that pain. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Yeah, take them down. Take, take them down. down. Take them 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 down. down. All right, thank you so much. That was Hope McMath, the Yellow House, and Take Them Down Jacks. And now we have Wells Todd from the Jacksonville Progressive Coalition and Take Them Down Jacks, and Veterans for Peace, Jacksonville. Woo! Um, it's been an emotional few weeks um, building this march visiting the memorial and museum in Alabama. Uh, I want to speak directly to the city officials. I want to speak to all of the city council people, both black and white. I want to speak to the mayor. I want to speak to the governor. And I want to speak to the person sitting in the White House. Yeah who believes that white supremacists are good people. That is what the Confederacy wanted. Police brutality is what the Confederacy wanted. Poor housing is what the Confederacy wanted. Prison is what the Confederacy wanted. The chain gang is what the Confederacy wanted. That's right. We must understand that that statue uh -huh. and the one in Confederate Park represent those things. That was our place. That was where black people were supposed to stay. We were never brought to this country to be free. That was not part of the deal. 
We were brought here to work and to die working. Um, my father was born, I believe, in 1917 in a little town called Woodruff, South Carolina. He, along with five million other African Americans, migrated, ran, fled the South yeah. because of segregation, because of lynching, because if you said you got the wrong change in a store, you would be lynched. I was in Alabama looking at some of the reasons they gave for lynching black people. One man was lynched because he knocked on the front door of a white woman's house. One man was lynched because he was doing construction work and a white man stole his shovel. And he asked for a shovel back and he was lynched. We have to understand how deeply rooted this is. Lynchings weren't carried out by night riders in the middle of the night. They were carried out before crowds of up to 200, 300 people. The newspapers would advertise the lynching. People would come with picnic lunches. They would sell tickets for those who wanted to shoot the body of the person who was first burnt and then lynched. I want to say this. From Trinidad to South Africa, from South Africa to New York, from to New York to Jacksonville, and across this land, these statues are being removed. Yes. 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 A doctor's statue was removed in New York about two weeks ago. He was a so-called gynecologist. And he did experiments on black women. The story back then was that black women and black men didn't feel pain like white people. And so he would do these experiments with nothing, nothing to anesthetize the patient, the person. His statue was finally removed. The question is, why was it there in the first place? Right. Why do we have to go through this in the first place? But we will. And we must keep our eye on the prize. Yes. Because the prize goes deeper than this statue. Yes. The prize goes to solving our social and economic problems in this country. And so in closing, I'm an old man, but I'm going to walk, and I'm going to talk, and I'm going to chant. Yes until I can anymore. Amen. And we want everybody who's watching this, who's listening to this, to come out and join us. We'll be marching down Phillips Highway the whole way. You can pick us up on live video. You can join us at any point. You can stop at any point, but we'll be there. Thank you. Finally, we would just like to say that today, today we make history, today we march against white supremacy, against racism. We will march on. It will not be an easy fight. It's not going to be a sprint. It's likely to be a marathon. But we will march. We will not give up. We will march until victory is won. Join the movement. Join the fight. It is a noble cause. Join us if there is no struggle.
There is no progress. Join the movement. Thank you. Yes. Oh yeah, we got a quick chant. So, uh, must go, you know, after everything I said. Uh, white supremacy. Must, must go. go. Racism. Must, must go. go. White supremacy. Must, must go. go. Racism. Must, must go. go. Take them down. Must Take them down. down. Take them down. down. Take them 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 down. No justice. No peace. No justice. No peace. No justice. No peace. All right. Let's get this party started.